Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you the pen performance and the line quality difference you can get from the Link Studio S1 Windows tablet versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra Android tablet. By the way, I'm comparing the Link Studio S1 with the Samsung tablet and not with the iPad Pro because these two tablets use pens that use Wacom EMR. And the uh, drawing performance between the Samsung tablet and the iPad Pro is kind of similar to me so I will not be making a separate video comparing these two tablets. So the first thing I want to let you know is for some reason the Link Studio Pen does not work on the Samsung tablet. It works only on the Link Studio tablet. However the Samsung S Pen works on both tablets. I drew two sets of lines on the Link Studio S1 and these were drawn with the Samsung S Pen with the soft nib so you can see the lines are actually much thicker compared to the lines from the Link Studio Pen and this is the Samsung S Pen with the hard plastic nib and this is able to draw thinner lines more easily so for this comparison video, I will be using the Samsung S Pen with the hard plastic nib instead of the soft one and the Link Studio Pen. There are many pens out there in the market that use Wacom EMR and the pressure performance will vary depending on the pens. So to see how each pen performs, I recommend you check out my reviews on my YouTube channel or on my blog. Links are in the video description below. To make the comparison more fair, I will be using the same app, which is Clip Studio. I will use the same brush, in this case, Bit Husky. And I will use the same brush size and file size. So the brush is 40 points. By the way, both tablets are great at taking notes. Let's look at the initial activation force of the Link Studio S1 first. So the product page of this tablet is finally up on their website and the crowdfunding date is going to be in February. At least that's what the website says. So initial activation force of this pen is really low. So this pen is quite sensitive. I can draw the thin lines really easily. I'm barely glancing, I'm just barely glancing the line on the drawing surface. This is the thin to thick transition. So you can see the pen is really sensitive. And this is the Samsung tablet. And this is how thick the brush really is. This pen is very sensitive as well. I can draw the thin lines really easily. The main difference I would say is this Samsung tablet drawing surface is glossy, so the pen tip is smoother. Whereas on the Link Studio S1, that's a matte textured drawing surface. Okay, let me just glance the pen slightly. Yeah, so I can get thin lines really easily. Thin and thick and thin. This is good. So from what I can see and feel, the line quality difference is quite similar. So the main difference here really is it feels better drawing on the matte textured surface even though this is still quite smooth but when drawing on a glossy display you know that it's glossy so there is no tactile drawing experience especially when drawing with a hard plastic tip let's do the slow diagonal line ruler test to test for wobble and jitter So this looks really straight to me. Yeah, very straight. And this is on the Samsung tablet. This is also really straight. 
Let's look at cursor misalignment. And this is very difficult for me to show you accurately because my camera is pointing at an angle. So right now I'm holding the pen vertically and from what I can see, the cursor is directly beneath the pen tip. If I tilt the pen 45 degrees, which is the angle that I usually use for drawing, I can see the cursor is still directly beneath the pen tip. Now you may see some misalignment, but that's due to my camera angle and the camera perspective. Now if I tilt the pen even lower, maybe for shading purposes, you can see the cursor starts to stray away from the pen tip. And this is okay because when I'm using the pen this low for shading, for the tilt brushes, I don't require that uh, level of precision. And this is the Samsung tablet. So now the pen is vertical and the cursor is directly beneath the pen tip from what I can see. If I tilt the pen at 45 degrees, the cursor is still directly beneath the pen tip. And if I tilt it even lower for shading for use with tilt brushes, you can see the cursor strays away slightly from the pen tip. Let's see how smooth the transition is for tilt brushes. So I'm going to tilt the brush to get the broader strokes now. Thin, broad, thin, broad, thin, broad, thin. Okay, the transition is quite smooth. There is no abrupt transition and tilt and pressure can work together at the same time. And now with the tilt brush on the Link Studio S1. Okay, the tilt is not as obvious as what you can see on the Samsung tablet. I can see the broader strokes, but it's not that obvious. Let me switch over to using the Samsung S Pen on the Link Studio S1. This is the same brush and I did not change any settings. So now when I tilt the uh, S Pen, you can see the broader strokes. So the S Pen performance is actually better on the Link Studio S1 compared to the Link Studio Pen. This app is Concepts on the Link Studio S1 tablet and tilt works fine here. The transition from thin to thick is a bit abrupt, but that's due to the app, not the pen. So this is the Samsung S Pen. And tilt performance is kind of similar. Let's look at cursor tracking at the extreme edge on the Link Studio S1. And cursor tracking is very accurate. There is no misalignment at all. This is the Samsung tablet and I cannot see the cursor. Anyway, cursor tracking is very accurate as well. Both tablets have laminated displays so they are not really affected by parallax and cursor tracking is accurate. So the colors on the Samsung displays are definitely look better and the contrast is better. Anyway, I will put out my full review for the Link Studio S1 Windows tablet very soon. And it's going to be a pretty long review because I have a lot to say about this tablet. This Samsung S Pen with the hard plastic tip is able to produce a wider variation of line width compared to the Link Studio Pen. Let me show you. I can draw thin lines and let me press down hard and that's the thicker I can go without pressing down too hard to the point where the pen tip breaks off. This is the Samsung S Pen. Thin lines, thick lines, and thin lines. So the thicker lines are thicker compared to the Link Studio Pen even though I did not change the brush size here. It is possible to get those wider line variation with the Link Studio Pen. You just have to tweak the pressure curve but the driver for this tablet does not allow you to tweak the pressure curve. So you can only tweak the or adjust the pressure curve if the drawing app that you use has this pressure curve adjustment. All right, to conclude, 
There are slight differences between the line quality and drawing performance between these two tablets and between the two pens. However, the differences are not that significant. So both tablets do provide pretty good drawing experience. As to which one to choose really comes down to the apps you want to use. So if you want to use desktop apps, if you need Windows OS, then obviously go with uh, a Windows tablet. The advantage of the Android tablet is the battery life is longer. I will cover more uh, differences between these two tablets in my full review for the Link Studio S1. One last thing I want to say is the performance on this tablet seems to be slightly better compared to the Microsoft Surface Pro. However, I cannot say that conclusively because I no longer have a Surface Pro beside to compare side by side. So that's just what I feel.